Colin Christensen here with Tenacious Ventures, and we're here at the Northwest Events Show, and we are interviewing people from around the floor, speakers that have been up on stage, as well as some of the booths. And so I have with me here one of the speakers that flew in for this event, Bobby Dutton, and he's going to talk about his initiative and a lot of the stuff he's been working on with his public speaking skills, Think Like a Pilot. So... I'm curious just at the name. <laughs> so why don't you give us a little bit of a background on what Think Like a Pilot is? How did you come up with it? What does it mean even? Sure, absolutely. And and to be clear, I did not fly myself here. I sat in the back of a plane like everybody else to get here because uh, jet fuel is cost prohibitive, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I do work in events. Um, that's been my bread and butter for 20 years. Uh, and the airplane stuff has always been my passion on the side. If I had a, a day off and some money to burn, I was flying if the weather was nice. Uh, and I kept leveling up just to get get better at it, to learn about it. I loved the combination of kind of understanding the physics and the electronics and the gadgetry and the science to achieve this magical goal and get to be above the clouds and far away from people and problems and the master of my own destiny. That was yeah. so satisfying. And what I found was as much as I kept those folders separate in my head, the way, I, the way I was leading, the way I was thinking, the way I was managing myself on the ground had a lot to do with my training as a pilot and, mm. and to compartmentalize like that was really serving me. And as the events business did better and better and better and the team was really happy and really productive and really profitable, I decided I really needed to figure out what was going on that was, that was working. Yeah. And so that's where Think Like a Pilot came from. Mm -hmm. So what kind of planes do you fly? Great question. I, I am a, a licensed to fly any single engine land based aircraft. Uh -huh. uh, so my favorite is a Cirrus, mm -hmm. which is one of the swankiest, safest uh, planes like that with a single engine. Their claim to fame is uh, a parachute system. So if oh, wow. everything goes bad, you can pull a red lever and lower to the ground the whole plane on a parachute and oh, survive. Wow. <laughs> and so is that VFR, IFR? Both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I've been trained in both, um, in 2020, I found like most events people, I had lots of time on my hands. Yeah. And so rather than being sad or watching Netflix or reading to the end of the internet, I just said, I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to prep for these written exams and I ended up yeah. getting my commercial license, my flight instructor rating, my advanced ground instructor license and my IFR instrument rating. Geez. So legitimately when you say think like a pilot, you're like, I had to learn how all to of it like a pilot. Yeah. So how does that relate then to some of the speaking that you're doing and, and some of the advice that you're giving in your uh, public speaking? Yeah. The, the first thing I notice about everyone, particularly within the events industry, is when you ask someone how they are, they don't say, I'm great, I'm thriving, I'm happy. They say, I'm so busy. Uh -huh. That's that's what 90 plus percent people say. And they're not lying. That That is the, the predominant way they're feeling. But pilots see, see stress as a, a hazardous thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting an airplane, the first pilot readiness checklist says like, am I able to do this flight? And if stress is high, I might not be. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the, the, the broadest things I like to bring back down to the ground is to, to reinforce that stress is problematic. And if you tell me how busy you are, you're telling me that you're stressed, you're struggling, you're not prioritizing effectively, you're overwhelmed, you're behind. <laughs> and I want to really send that message, like don't tell people how stressed you are and don't don't think stress equals success Yeah, because it really doesn't. Yeah, I agree. We had an interview earlier where basically we were talking about like the way that stress can impact you and how you have to have self-care yes. and eat right, exercise, sleep. So within the way that you're speaking, how, how are you relating? What little, how does that break down into daily behaviors or how we're interfacing with people or how we're interfacing with work even. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is self-management, like you said, which includes self-care. So if you can start the day with, with a routine and structure and checklists and things like that, I mean, you can, you can really get through whatever your challenge is, whatever you're navigating. And for me, it starts with the routine. Like I said, I wake up because the smart shades let light in, in the room at the right time and uh -huh. the right music comes on in the right place to draw me into the next chapter. <laughs> My calendar is super dialed because I spend an hour a week calendaring. Yeah. And so I know exactly what today's flight looks like. Mm -hmm. And by, by being prepared and being ahead of it and being vocal about what changes need to be, need to be made, I can be super proactive in kind of designing the day that I expect to do. And I've gotten really good at it. So what happens when you have your schedule planned out like that, calendared <laughs> out, and then all of a sudden you get to one of them, you're just like, 
I don't want to do this. Yeah. And you struggle to find the energy. Like, what do you do? Yeah. So you got to be proactive. First of all, you do it. Mm -hmm. if, assuming it's time sensitive and it's where it belongs on your calendar because of a deadline, yeah. you do it. Uh, if you don't, it'll affect you negatively again the next yeah. time it comes up and again. And that's a negative multiplier. And we're already so busy. Yeah. Why, why be stressed about this bad thing five times before we just get it done? Yeah. Um, the other thing is we can, maybe we can move it or maybe... Tuesday mornings isn't when I should be writing contracts because I'm not in a good mood on Tuesday mornings. That's true. Yeah. So understand that and, and adjust. So next week, I'm going to say I needed an hour a week on contracts. But if I do it right after lunch on Thursdays, mm -hmm. I'll get it done. Mm -hmm. And now I know, all right, I got to get this contract for this client done by May 1st. Where do I have that magical Thursday afternoon slot that I know is going to work for me so I can yeah. adapt that process? Well, even one of the conversations we had earlier, too, was about time of day, recognizing when you have more energy and you're you're more like productive, because even as you say that, then I'm like, yeah, maybe what you do is you <laughs> find out when if this is an important thing, I should move it to the time that I have that two hour really productive period that normally I have each day. So that's. That's great. That is a way to kind of think about it. And also while you're proactively planning yes. as you're talking, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Cause then I could fit it into where I think it belongs with the pri almost like prioritization is based on some of that efficiency of, of my own daily habits of, of being productive. So that's great. That's, I, I like, I like that a lot actually. Thank you. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting that there are always going to be things you do plan for, and there's always going to be things that pop up that become important that you might not have planned. But what you can anticipate is I might need two hours in my inbox on Monday. Yeah. And so put it on the calendar. Yeah. And if that gets hijacked later, maybe you allow that to happen. But now I'm not surprised when my email's demanding my time because that is yeah. predictable, even if I don't know oh, what's yeah. in there. Yeah. Well, I've, if I wake up in the morning, if I look at my phone, <laughs> I won't do any of the wake up routine that I want. Yeah. So I literally have to not look at the phone until my routine is done. Yeah. So I, I've definitely learned that one at least. And so. We're, we're good to go there. But what are some of the other key takeaways um, in some of the the think like a pilot sort of mentality that you have? Yeah, I think I think the other thing is just learning how to manage information in your own mind uh, and to realize that if you're overwhelmed or if you're feeling overloaded with info all the time, it's not that you have too much on your plate. It's that you don't know which pieces are important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so filtering that out, organizing them, getting ahead of them and kind of being the being in charge of your own time mm -hmm. is super helpful. So priorities, practice, and uh, process. That's awesome. So if anybody wants to get a hold of you to book you as a speaker, yeah. or have you come in, how do they do that? Uh, great question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Got a brand new website at thinklikeapilot.com. And uh, there's actually four or five different sessions that go into calendaring and time management and mm -hmm. deeper into the aviation side of things too. And uh, it's super helpful. And people have been really, really enjoying the sessions. Awesome. Well, I wish we had more time to continue speaking and basically like dig into some of the key takeaways, but I guess we don't want to spoil <laughs> all the, all the great information. So if people want, like they should reach out to you, get yeah. you to, or find out where you're speaking next and go attend and check it out. But yeah, I love the tidbits, the little golden nuggets that you have and really appreciate having you here with us uh, awesome. for the, with this interview. So again, thanks for, thanks for coming out. Thank you very much. Thank you.